Well, hello there, and welcome to Adventures in Pinterest slash The Merlot Down. Today we're going to be looking at ketogenic wines and how wine can be incorporated into a ketogenic lifestyle, but all this information is coming from Pinterest. So, crack open your favorite bottle of wine and enjoy. So obviously I'm sitting on the side of this video because today we are going to look at Pinterest and pins that have to do with keto and wine. Maybe some food as well. We're going to see. Um, if you are not a Pinterest addict like me, you need to get on my level. That's all I'm saying. Now a lot of people ask me, Allie, what kind of wines do you drink? And I drink my favorites. This is one of my favorite white wines and this is Sauvignon Blanc by Starborough. So if you're looking for a low carb wine option, always go dry. Sauvignon Blanc's one of the driest whites. I actually even don't like Chardonnay or Pinot Grigio or whatever. Not a fan. But if you like reds, I suggest a Cabernet Sauvignon or a Merlot. Even a Pinot Noir can be um, pretty light on the carbs. I also like a Prosecco. Um, that's like a sparkling white, basically. I don't know, but it's pretty dry usually as well. Surprisingly enough, when you go out to eat at a restaurant, a Prosecco is about the same as a glass of white. So try it out. It seems fancy, but it ain't. It's just got some bubbles in it. Just has some air. Somebody breathes some life into it. It's just breathy wine, that's all. But we're gonna look at some specifics today. And I have my handy dandy laptop ready to go. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Just FYI, I am not a wine aficionado. I just know I like my white wine and my red wine, and that's about it. $13 or less. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and start with the amounts of carbs that are in wine. Now, again, this is Pinterest, so nothing is fact-checked, and people, you know, just post stuff so that you click on their blog, and then they can make money. Um, so, you know, always take this with a grain of salt, but from what I saw, these looked like pretty good numbers from what I know. What do I know? I don't know. So let's look at this one. The best wine brands for a keto diet. Well, first off, I don't think those are brands. Those are types of wine. So here we go. I don't know what an Amarone is, but it's got very few carbs at 2.4. I guess I'm going to have to look for that. They don't sell that at Food Lion. All right. Going to have to go to the total wine. Now, a brew, brute, um, I believe that is the French way that you say that. <laughs> that just means dry. And I'm guessing they're talking about champagne there because when you buy champagne, it'll say brute on it. And that means dry. If you didn't know, I'm sure you knew. If you didn't know, now you do. Sauvignon Blanc coming in at three grams of carbs per, it didn't tell you the amount. See, this This is why I'm crazy, okay? You guys know, if you've seen any of my other videos, the way I lost weight on keto was that I measure everything basically all the time. So to me, a five ounce serving of wine is about 145 to 150 grams on a gram scale. That's what this is. I may have taken a few sips. All right, don't judge me. Okay, so Pinot Noir is one of the lower carb ones coming in at 3.4. Amarillo is at 3.7. And Cab Sauv is 3.8. Hmm, 3.8. That's the one I always get if I don't get a white. I just, I started Amarillo, then I kind of went to Pinot Noir, now I'm on Cab, you know. I actually do like a Malbec, and that's not too bad either at 3.8. So I just started getting into Malbecs. My mom recommended me some. And then Shiraz. I did just buy a bottle of Shiraz. I might have to try it out. I don't know. 3.8, not too bad. Sangiovese. I don't know what that is. Don't think I've ever had that one. I am not a fan of rosés. So if you want to drink a rosé, I'm guessing this Provence rosé is four grams. You know what? That's too much for me. Zinfandel, huh? I didn't know that those were sweet. And then white Zinfandel coming in at 7.1. Whoa. So, you know, you can find your own information. Honestly, I would recommend, I haven't been there much, but there's a subreddit on reddit.com called Keto Drunk. So you might want to check that out if you're interested in keto and drinking alcohol like some people. All right, what is champagne versus Prosecco? I don't know. I just always call it sparkling wine because you can't go wrong. Champagne and Prosecco both are sparkling wines, right? That's what I think. Ah, Prosecco is made in Italy. Italia. My mother country. That's where Ali McWowie comes from. Ali McWowie. So they actually come from a grape called Prosecco. Interesting. This doesn't really have much to do with keto, but I do like both champagne and Prosecco, and they are both very dry and usually very low-carb alcohol options. The Great Debate. Is red wine better than white? Well, let's see. White wine has fewer cancer-preventing antioxidants, but white wine has less histamine, which means them allergies and that flush you might get from a red wine. You ain't gonna happen. 
find in a white wine. White wine has more acid, so it's going to hurt your teeth a little bit. Got to watch out for them face bones. Well, we are in a crisis in which the lungs are affected, and apparently white wine helps to keep lung tissue healthy more so than red wine. So cheers, y'all. Mm -hmm. This is your girl being proactive during this whole pandemic. White wine's got about 70 calories. Red wine's got about 74 per a three to five ounce glass. That's a big, <laughs> that's a big difference. Maybe they meant 3.5 ounce. I don't know what they're talking about over here. Oh yeah, generally when I, I just, I looked up one generic red wine thing I found by somebody and when I plug it in, that's what I use. So 125 calories to three to four net grams of carbs per five ounces or 145 grams on a gram scale. I know. I memorize these things. Oh, well, you know, the more you use it, the easier it gets. That doesn't sound good. Forget that. Fewer known medication interactions with white wine. Now, I am not a doctor, just so you know. Um, <laughs> I studied the humanities in college. That's why I'm struggling a little bit. So it looks like white wine, depending on what you're looking for, might be a better choice. But red wine stains the teeth, okay? And the lips, you know, wine lip. All right, so here's another uh, carb and calorie chart that we have that's called wine calorie chart, but it also includes carbs. So it says Merlot is four here. Pinot Grigio, 3.9, basically four. I always just kind of round up a little bit. <laughs> Pinot Noir, three. Chardonnay, 3.7. Cab Sal, 3.5, uh-uh. Riesling, don't even drink that. Rosé, ugh. Sal Blanc, what do we got? 120 cows and 2.7 grams of carbs, uh-uh. This one I think is saying it's about the same, about the same as the last chart. Burgundy. I'm not rich enough to drink in Burgundy. Apparently, what I've heard from a very fancy friend, if a wine is named after a region, that's a nice wine. And all the other stuff is junk. But, you know, the junk gets me by. So, Moscato just sounds gross, so I didn't even care. Sounds musky. No. Okay, let's talk about carbs and alcohol. Liquor. Yes, usually you can drink liquor and not have to worry about carb counts at all. But they do contain calories. And I think it's about a shot. What is that? An ounce and a half or something? That contains about 100 calories, um, maybe 120. So it's, it's you know, you got to choose battles sometimes. I'd rather have like a whole just glass of something that I actually like the taste of. Like this is like apple juice to me. Thanks. I do not enjoy the taste of liquor. Although I will drink a gin and soda with some lemon if they don't have my wine that I want. In a pinch. In a pinch only. All right, and these numbers are looking pretty much the same. Saw Blanc coming in at three-ish. Yeah, that sounds about right. So again, about three to four net grams of carbs for your dry wines, basically. This is what that's saying. Beer, not so much. Oh, a light lager, really? 4.9? I haven't had a beer since before starting keto. So I just, it's one of those things that I have totally cut out of my life, like bread and pasta and all that. So just for me, I don't drink beer, but if you are a beer drinker, I get that. I understand. Live your life. All right, so it's looking like you can pretty much incorporate, you know, any type of alcohol that you want into your life, um, whether it's a beer, a wine, or definitely a liquor into your ketogenic lifestyle. It just depends on your approach. So if you've been wondering about that, there you go. Does it um, deal with inflammation? I don't know, but it definitely does dehydrate you. And I have definitely heard that the hangovers are worse because we're already flushing out all of our water on keto, right? We are getting rid of, like, just this water constantly. It's that whoosh, that, you know, just... You're thirstier on keto, so especially when you drink and alcohol dehydrates you, um, yeah, it's, it's going to hurt the next day. So keep some ibuprofen near near your bedstand table, bedside stand, bedside table. All right, let's get into the fun stuff. Wine and cheese pairings, my two favorites. Y'all know I love me some cheese for like two years. I just had cheese for breakfast, and I just had a snack of Parmesan, y'all. I had a bag of Parmesan that was already grated, and I just took a spoon, and I just ate about, I don't know, 70 grams of that. It was good. So I like cheese. Let's see what goes with the good old salt bump with my white wine. All right, goat. Yep, I like that. Asiago, I'm not sure if I've had that, but I feel like every fast food restaurant includes it on one of their sandwiches. Gouda, that's pretty good. It was in my keto risotto. Gruyere, yep, that was also in one of my keto recipes. That was in my cauliflower gratin dauphinoise. Pinot Noir, mm, mm, mm. Gouda, feta, love me some feta. That's probably one of my most favorite summertime 
snacks and if you shred it if you put it on the grater you get so much out of so little and it's just it's so tasty you can cover a whole salad with it and you don't even need oil and dressing and all that so i just i love feta it really holds a place in my heart i love cheese swiss i can't ever really taste swiss it's just empty calories to me so why even bother if i'm gonna put the calories in my mouth i want to be able to taste them poor salut never heard of that capsaw blue cheese love it that was my breakfast cheats for a long time actually it was gorgonzola but it's basically the same thing washed rind that just kind of doesn't sound right camembert i've actually never had a camembert cheese i've had brie which i assume is pretty close but i don't know i used to love brie that was also one of my breakfast cheeses but now last time i've been having it it's been leaving a weird aftertaste and now i understand when people are like i don't like brie now i get it um i don't know maybe you got to heat it up for it to be nice and not pungent oh what happened to my tastes gruner vet Lindner, don't know merlot gorgonzola basically blue cheese brie camembert cheddar love me some cheddar I've been really loving, um, what's it called? Monterey Jack. Mm, that one's pretty good too. Oh, what goes with champagne, AKA sparkling wine. Let's see. Beaufort. Don't know what that is. Colby. Yeah, that's pretty good. Edom. I've had that a little bit. It's all right. And I can't see the last one because freaking Pinterest puts this thing here on the bottom of all of its pins and you can never see what it is. I never say champagne when I own the sparkling wine because I don't want to sound stupid, but I don't care when people do it. Like, at the restaurant I go to a lot, my Japanese restaurant, the bartender's like, you want a glass of champagne? And I'm like, well, yeah, but it's real sparkling wine. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to cheat. I think I'm stupid. All right. That was my spiel. More cheese. All right. Oh, this is just all about cheese. Cheese lovers. Yeah, I'm going to pin you and save you for later. Oh, it tells you where everything's from. Interesting. And what animal it's from. Huh. Manchego. If you've never had Manchego, you're missing out on live. It's my favorite cheese. It's up there. Manchego's up there definitely with like mozzarella, feta, and Manchego. Top three. Top three cheeses right there. If you want to fight about it in the comments, I'll go. I'll go. I'll throw some bows. Oh, they have these lovely little infographics for all the different types of wine. And many of them I have never heard of, but let's look at the Sauv Blanc. Body. Don't know what that really means when it comes to wine, but uh... I mean, I know what it generally means, right? Acidity. It is pretty acidic. I liken it to a sour apple juice that's not very sweet or super sweet. To me, it's sweet now because it's like the sweetest thing I drink. Sweetness, very low, yes, but it also is sweet to me. So, you know, whatever. Fruit, it's in the middle. Yeah, I get that. It tastes like apples. Yep, green apple, tart lemon, wet stone. That, I, I don't get the wet stone. Well, I guess it is a little slightly. Well, I feel like just they say these things and you're like, yeah, that sounds about right. And you just, you know, about wine, people are really into it. Grass, why not? Why not? Pairings with gazpacho. You know what? I make my own gazpacho at the Mexican restaurant. You know what I do? If they have a nice salsa that I like, I will just like eat the salsa with a fork and I consider that a gazpacho appetizer. Um, I just don't eat the chips eat the salsa and it's real good maybe add in some extra hot sauce to make it extra spicy picante grilled fish with lemon yes salad with goat cheese sounds good flavor profile it's light slightly fruity and that's about it Fouli fumé bordeaux blanc sans serre sans serre i'm gonna name my daughter that sans serre sans serre oh, don't you guys go stealing my ideas i should have said that on video now I first had Pinot Noir at a wedding and I really liked it because it was light. Um, it wasn't very heavy. I don't know. It was just easy to drink and you know sometimes that's what you want. That's why I don't drink liquors because they're just so pungent and I just I can't get over the taste. So let's see. Body. Uh, not really. Acidity. Okay. Sweetness. No. Fruit. In the middle. All right. Primary flavors. Cherry. Cranberry. And forest. <laughs> forest floor. <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah, I, I gotta, I guess you can taste a bit of dry leaves and mushroom and dirt footprints. Pair with grilled chicken salmon, wild mushrooms, roasted pork, and a flavor profile. It's light and fruity. Willamette Valley, Umpqua Valley, and Columbia Gorge. That all sounds American. All of that sounds American. Do we make a good Pinot? Oh, it's from Oregon. That's, oh, these are, they have locations. Oh, the Sau Blanc was from France. All right, just had to figure that out. Let's look at 14 essential seafood and wine pairings. All right, salmon and Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir stands up to the richness of the salmon while still being light and bright enough to pair with fish. Hmm, interesting. 
oysters and bubbly. I've only ever had oysters once. Um, and it was because I was drinking some bubbly. So I guess that was just meant to be. I actually have had them twice now, but it's not something that I order. I just don't know enough about it. I feel like if I could cook it and kill myself, I probably don't want to eat it in general. Tuna and rosé, scallops and sauve blanc. I do love me a good bacon wrap scallop. Mm-hmm. Sauvignon blanc allows the distinct grassy and buttery notes of the scallops to shine through. What is this with sauve blanc and grassiness? I don't know. What's happening, Pinterest? What you doing? <laughs> Vino Verde, I don't know what that is. Never ever heard of that. Albarino, Trout and Chardonnay. Fish and chips and bubbly. Mm, I do miss a good fish and chips. Like, especially like when you go to a pub, like that's like, that's always on a pub menu. And I just miss me some good old fish and chips and tata sauce. Mm. I don't know what any of this is. Verdejo Suave, what is that? I don't know, I guess they're in Chile. Chilean sea bass. All right, more wine and cheese. Um, I'm gonna leave that one alone. I wanna get to like some actual meals. I wanna see what I can actually eat. Meat, here we go. Meat, cheese, and wine. So, Chardonnay, Riesling Rosé, ham, cheddar, mozzarella, baby Swiss. Pinot Noir, Merlot, Pinot Grige. Is that, is Pinot Gris, Gris, Grige? Is that different from Pinot Grigio? Don't know, like I said, not an expert. Smoked ham, no, oh, they like their ham. Pinot Noir, Rioja, Merlot. Rioja's from Spain. <laughs> roast beef. Sounds good. I like me a good roast beef. Beaujolais. Beaujolais. Bure. Barbara. I... All right, Barbara. You got all these Frenchies, and then you got Barbara. All right. Dry sausage. Sauve Blanc. Cote de Rhone. Chardonnay. Turkey and chicken. Swiss Kobe. Provolone. Provolone, again, is one of those cheeses. I can't taste it, so I'd be like, mm, skip the provolone. Give me some. Smell good. I do like chicken a lot. It's such a lean meat, but it's not like super dry like turkey. And I just incorporate it and so much into my life. A good chicken breast. I just, I could eat it every single day. Well, <laughs> well folks, that's about it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Just a little bit something different. Um, I haven't done an Adventures and Pinterest video in like so long. Same as like a Merlot down, even though this is not Merlot. Um, you, you get the drill, right? If you enjoyed this type of video, just kind of looking through things together, making a few jokes, then please like and subscribe to this channel and leave me a comment. Tell me what is your favorite wine, your favorite cheese, and your favorite meat. And do you mix them all together sometimes? Mm. Summer is coming up. It is Memorial Day weekend. Um, I'm not doing anything special or anything. I'm just going to rest, I think. But let me know what you're doing. Are you guys going to have like some cute little finger foods? Should I do an Adventures in Pinterest with some finger foods? I also kind of want to do like a Pinterest fail keto thing. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing videos like that. Maybe not fails. They might turn out really well. I don't know. We're going to find it out, I guess. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to follow me on social media, I will link all of that down below. And I will see you guys next time. My name's Allie. Have a good one. Bye.